so in our video today um, we'll have two sections um, we'll have the Australian uh, essential eight maturity model and the Australian government information security manual uh, ISM we'll discuss them uh, both um, in brief but in a way that will give you a good idea what they are and how you can utilize and use them in your uh, organization there are very good publications uh, and should be more much more popular um, and i hope everyone uh, start using them in their uh, organization in australia and everywhere because a lot of smart people worked on them and produced very uh, uh, quality material so to start the essential aid has been developed by the australian cyber security center acsc uh, which is part of signal for the american audience uh, this is equivalent to nsa in america and the main idea is to prevent or produce a strategy to mitigate cybersecurity incidents. Um, the, strategy to the strategy is to mitigate cybersecurity incidents and to put a priority mitigation list uh, strategy to assist organizations protect their systems against a um, range of adversaries. Um, the medication can be customized to every organization risk profile and to the adversary that they concern the most. But to start somewhere, the essential aid was born is to make any organization that apply it uh, not to be uh, the lowest hanging fruit in any cyber attack. Uh, it's a good baseline to, to start because there's no single mitigation strategy that will guarantee or prevent, totally prevent a cyber security incident from taking place but at least you have a good baseline prevention uh, mechanism applied in your environment. Uh, the essential aid have three maturity uh, level you can um, test or assess upon, which is one uh, partial, the second uh, is mostly, and the last or the third uh, level is fully aligned with the essential aid uh, mitigation strategy. What are these essential aid? Uh, application control patch applications, configure Microsoft um, uh, macros in your environment, user application hardening, restrict administrative privileges, uh, patch operating system, uh, multi-factor authentication and daily backup. Now, um, we'll discuss uh, uh, in brief uh, about each section and what it is and how you can mitigate it and I'll explain the maturity level how we can assess it in, in a basic example. Application control is to prevent execution of any unapproved application in your environment. That could be as well a malicious application, EXE, DLL, PowerShell, anything unapproved to run in your environment will be uh, blocked. Uh, patch applications. Um, web browsers, Microsoft Office, any application used should be patched uh, whenever there's a patching for it uh, in, a, in a short time frame. Um, and this is a good way as well to think not to have hundreds of applications in your environment because it will be very almost impossible to look after. Um, configure Microsoft Office macro. Uh, block any internet uh, macros from running in your environment. Only allow trusted internal approved ones if you have to. Uh, restrict administrative privileges. If you have um, uh, someone working as an administrator in your uh, AD environment, uh, they should not be allowed to browse the internet and use emails uh, using this admin account. They should have another um, standard user. Whenever there's only strictly work for this admin account to be used and utilized, only they are allowed to use it. And uh, assess who to give access to as an admin in your environment. Um, patch operating systems. Whenever Microsoft released the patch Tuesday, um, have a testing environment because sometimes Microsoft produce patches that will uh, cause more destruction in your environment than a malicious malware, unfortunately. So you have to have a testing lab that have all the operating systems in your environment. There, you test the patches working, everything is fine, then you push it to your production in a timely manner uh, before uh, malicious hackers and uh, uh, adversaries start taking advantage of that. Uh, Multi-factor authentication. It is so important to always talk about it. Um, if you have it, uh, applied in your environment. It's always good to have a second layer of protection if your passwords uh, got pro uh, compromised, especially for privileged users to have another layer of protection. 
daily backup. It's so important to have a backup happening in your environment and test these backups in certain intervals to make sure they work. Because sometimes you get ransomed, it's the only way to uh, mitigate and come back um, with the organization is to use these backups. Very important. So in, in short, these are the essential aids that if you apply, if you look after, um, you're doing good. You won't be the lowest hanging fruit. Uh, and to give example of uh, how the maturity level apply, for example, have batch applications. If, for example, I have my strategies to uh, apply the patch within a month, this is partial. If I can do it within two weeks or a week, this is mostly. And if I can do it within 48 hours or even by, uh, uh, earlier, I'm mostly, uh, I'm fully, sorry, uh, 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 met, uh, on, on a third level, fully uh, aligned with the strategy. So this is how you uh, compare uh, in a very simple, basic way. Uh, this is the essential aid. It's very important, very handy, very good to apply as a basic cornerstone baseline in your environment and you start going from there. Um, now we come to the second part of uh, this video, which is the Australian Government Information Security Manual. Um, the purpose is to provide a strategic guidance to any organization um, how to protect the system and information um, from cyber threats. Um, the I ISM is, uh, is divided into four sections, four pillars, um, which is govern, protect, uh, detect and respond. So what govern is uh, identify and manage the security risks. Uh, protect is imp uh, implement the, the controls uh, that prevent you prevent these security uh, risks from happening. Detect is detect and understand the security risk and responding to and recovery from a cybersecurity incident. Very basic, but um, very uh, um, uh, full with controls how to do it. And when you look at them, you can't but compare them to or see how similar they are to the NIST cybersecurity framework, which is identify, protect, detect, uh, respond, and uh, recover. This is not a bad thing if you have something really good, base your uh, uh, strategy, base your uh, publication around that. It's not a bad thing. Uh, with the Australian uh, Cybersecurity or Information Security Manual, you have as well maturity modeling, uh, which is incomplete, initial, um, developing, managing, and optimized. Um, I won't go into in, in too much details with this one because it's really uh, a large volume of, of publication, very important. I'll put all the uh, links and all the uh, um, things that you need in the description. If you're interested, go and check them out. Really good uh, work. Uh, technically, this is everything we wanted to discuss today, but um, I want to bring up um, something I've been reading about um, lately in a lot of cybersecurity um, um, discussions and communities about uh, trusted AI and ML and how that will affect the cybersecurity work and take uh, some work from cybersecurity analysts. And I see that far further from truth. And I will give that in one example about the latest uh, chain supply chain attack that happened with the solar wind and affected a lot of other organizations, uh, mostly uh, FireEye. And with everything in place with AI, AIs and machine learning and a lot of sophisticated complex um, detection uh, um, in this environment in FireEye, it took one a smart, very smart analyst, he discovered that in his routine checks that one privileged user had added another uh, phone number. And he contacted that user, asked him, did you do that? And said, I don't know what you're talking about. And that's how they discovered and they start investigating more. So it took that person with all the security uh, fancy equipment they didn't discover. It took one smart, intelligent analyst to, to find out that and investigate further. A lot of cybersecurity brands, unfortunately, they use SolarWind and they didn't come forward. They didn't say anything to their customers. Um, others as well worked with Microsoft, helped Microsoft with their environment because Microsoft dropped the ball as well with this attack. 
and provided scripts that run and detect and find um, these malicious binaries. So there's these organizations, cybersecurity, that do really well and help, and there are others, even that they got breached, they don't talk about it, which is unfortunate. Um, just want to say that always the human intelligence will be there, nothing can replace it. Uh, AI is very important, it will take us to Mars and um, make new discoveries, but it's always essential to have the human uh, sense in everything, and um, especially in cybersecurity. Just wanted to add that. Um, hope you watch all the video and you, you reached to the end of that. Thank you for doing this.